Hi guys, welcome to Residence Made Easy with Charges Part 2. If you haven't seen Part 1, you can click the cards up here uh, where Frank goes over a residence problem with a negative charge. And so in this video, I'm going to go over a problem with positive charge. And so here's the problem that we're going to go over. If you can hit pause right now and try this out and come back and we'll go over the explanation. Alright, so hopefully you got all the answers. There are seven possible resonance structures and we'll go over them right now. Uh, the first thing I want to note is if you haven't seen part one, go check part one out. Go check part one out. Uh, Frank goes over an analogy with a positive charge where you want to think of it as a well where all the other charges want to fill. And so the first thing I'm going to do is draw on the lone pairs. So there's two on oxygen and then a pair on nitrogen. And so, like I said earlier, this positive charge really wants these charges, or these electrons. And so the first thing we're going to do is fill it in with the lone pairs over here. This is going to give us a bond right here, and a positive charge on our oxygen. Okay, and so the first thing we're going to do, like I said earlier, is to bring this lone pair over here to this bond to fill in this positive charge. And just note that you're not bringing the lone pair all the way to the charge, you're bringing it to the bond. So these lone pairs aren't directly going to the charge. And so I'm just going to quickly fill in um, the, rest, the rest of the structure that we haven't changed. So this bond here, this bond, this bond, and I think that's everything. And so now we want to look at if we can do anything more with this resonance structure. And so uh, bringing this bond back over here would give us the original structure. And so we would think to fill in the charge from this side, but we know the carbonyl group is an, is an electron withdrawing group, and so these, these electrons will never be donated elsewhere. And so this resonance structure path is complete. And so let's go back to the original structure and look at what else we can do. And so this positive charge can also be filled with electrons in this bond here. And so we're gonna label this A and this A, as Frank does in his other videos. And then we're actually going to draw an arrow here and label this B. And then again, I'm just going to fill in everything that I haven't changed. So this bond here, this bond here. And this new bond is going to be formed here. Once again, not going directly to the positive charge, but going to the bond adjacent to the positive charge. And then now we need a new positive charge because this area lost electrons. And so this will become our new positive charge. Or if we use an analogy, our new well. Okay, so now we have a new positive well here, and so we have to see what else we can do with this resonance structure. Are there any more paths that we can take? And so if I draw on these lone pairs here, we see we have electrons here that want to attack this positive charge, and we also have a bond here that can fill in the well as well. So that's two different paths. The first thing we'll do is use the nitrogen and bring these down uh, because they want to be near yeah, this positive charge. And so, and so this will look like this right now. Okay, so these electrons are going to come down to fill in this well here, giving us a double bond with nitrogen here. And I'm just going to, once again, draw on everything that hasn't changed. So it's going to go here and here. And so now we have this new resonance structure, and we need our positive charge, which is going to be on the nitrogen where the electrons left. And so we want to see if we can do anything more with this uh, resonance structure. And so we see we can't because there are no more charges around the nitrogen that can fill this well in. And we also do not want to create any new charges, so we can't use anything on this side of the molecule. So let's go back to the previous structure here and see if we can do anything else. Well, I noted earlier that this bond can also attack this positive charge, so we do have another path that we can take. And so this one is going to attack this bond. Once again, the bond not directly to the charge. And we'll label the first pathway C, and we'll label this one D. So what's that going to look like? Well, you're going to have a double bond here, and then everything else that hasn't changed is going to be the same. And we're going to have a new positive charge where the electrons left, which is going to be down here. Okay, and so from here it's pretty easy because this is just going to, this positive charge is just going to be attacked by the double bonds in the ring and to the adjacent ring, and so that's going to look like this. This bond will now attack this positive charge. And once again, by positive charge, I mean the bond. And that's going to give us a new structure. 
with a new double bond here. And then once again, we need the positive charge. So where do the electrons leave from? Well, it's right here. And again, same same process. This is now going to be one. It's going to be. This is now going to be attacked by the next double bond here. And so these will fill in the well. And again, just the things that are unchanged don't change. And there's going to be a new double bond here. And once again, a new positive charge right here where the electrons left. And so again, if we draw on our lone pairs, we have two lone pairs on this oxygen. And these lone pairs really want to be where this positive charge is. So these lone pairs are going to come in and make a bond next to the positive charge. And so you'll have a double bond here. And the oxygen lost a lone pair and is now sharing two electrons, so it'll need a positive charge here. And now you want to analyze if you can do anything else with this structure. Well, you can see you might think that a bond here could fill in the well of the positive charge, but again, the carbonyl group never wants to donate electrons because it's an electron withdrawing group. And so the only thing I'll do is suck up electrons. And so we are finished with this structure as well. And so hopefully you got all these answers. If you didn't, hopefully this explanation uh, helped. If you like this video, you can like it down here. Uh, the clutch prep code for this season until December 31st is orgomateeg hex H -E -X. Uh, You can look at part one again in the cards over here. Subscribe, put on the alert bell if you want to see more videos. Uh, leave us any questions in the comments if you have any questions on either part one or part two or any of Frank's previous videos. And if you have any suggestions for new videos, then you can leave those as well. All right, see you in the next video. Whoops. Hi guys, welcome to part two of the Resonance uh, Made Easy. Resonance made easy with charges. With charges yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That was good. Stern again.